In the late 1820s, Charleston, South Carolina was in a recession. The local merchants decided they needed a railroad to connect Charleston to the thriving inland markets. In October 1830, the engine arrived and was named the best friend of Charleston. It was the first steam locomotive in the United States to make regularly scheduled passenger service. The six mile trip was described by the local newspapers. We flew on the wings of wind at speeds of 15 to 25 miles per hour, annihilating time and space, leaving all the world behind. Like a live rocket scattering sparks and flames on either side, hop, step and jump, and we landed safely before any of us had time to determine whether or not it was prudent to be scared. In 1830, the total mileage of U.S. railroads was 23 miles. The best friend returned economic prosperity to Charleston and was the beginning of railroad passenger service in America. The best friend was indeed the little engine that did. The John Bull steam locomotive ran the rails for the Camden and Amboy Railroad of New Jersey for 35 years between 1833 and 1866. The 10 ton steam locomotive built in England was delivered to the Philadelphia docks in pieces. After assembling and a test run, modifications were made. The boiler dome was altered to enhance performance and a front axle, two wheels, plus a cow catcher were added. Also added was a bell and headlight, making it the first locomotive to have a bell, headlight, and cow catcher. In 1871, the Pennsylvania Railroad purchased the CNA, refurbished the John Bull, and put it on display until 1884, when it became the Smithsonian Institution's first major industrial exhibit. In 1981, the Smithsonian Institution fired up the John Bull and it became the oldest operating steam locomotive in the world. The DeWitt Clinton, named after the governor of New York, was the first steam locomotive to operate in the state of New York. It began operations in 1831 for the Mohawk and Hudson Railroad. The DeWitt Clinton's first run was a 16 mile journey from Albany to Schenectady. Its passenger cars were yellow stagecoaches fitted with railroad trucks. The passengers sat either inside or outdoors on rumble seats. A grand celebration was planned to mark the operating of the steam line on August 9, 1831. A big crowd gathered. The conductor blew the horn. The engine leaped forward and the crowd burst into cheers. But the leap forward was with such great force that all the passengers tumbled backwards out of their seats and almost fell off the train. But the excitement was just beginning. Later, when the train stopped for water, the brakes worked too well. The passengers were thrown out of their seats forward this time. But things settled down after that shaky start. The Mohawk and Hudson Railroad, which later became part of the New York Central System, utilized the DeWitt Clinton for 14 years. Only once during a heavy snow in 1832, did the sturdy little locomotive fail to complete its run. The 040 Stour Bridge Lion was the first steam locomotive to operate in the United States. The locomotive was manufactured in Stour Bridge, England and was purchased by the Delaware and Hudson Railroad to carry coal from Pennsylvania to New York. The lion part of this name came from the proud lion's head painted on the boiler front. 
The Lions' first run was set for August 8, 1829, in Honesdale, Pennsylvania. A big crowd gathered, but convinced the lion would never work and the noisy contraption might kill anyone who rode on it, no one volunteered for the ride. So amidst the jeers and laughter, Horatio Allen, the brave engineer, mounted the hissing lion. The jeers quickly turned to cheers as the Stour Bridge lion charged forward, crossed a trestle bridge, and disappeared. Many thought it would not return, but soon, with the courageous Allen still at the throttle and riding backwards, triumphantly back to Hornsdale. The crowd clapped and shouted, but the lion's reign was short-lived. At seven tons, it proved too heavy for the track, and a lighter locomotive was designed to replace it. The lion was put in storage, never to roar again. These four primitive locomotives were the beginning of a travel revolution and paved the way for the great passenger trains that pounded the rails over the next 100 years.